Hey there. So I'm back and thought that I would give you the, the little visual of the littles. So the question that I have for you is, what is your first knee-jerk response that comes up for you when you think of shifting from a place of what I call uncomfortable comfortable? Perhaps you are wanting to make a shift in your life or you're being shifted without your consent. Maybe it's in or out of a relationship, in or out of a job. Perhaps you're wanting to start a new career or even decluttering your home, your head, or your heart. What does that look like for you? And what does it more importantly feel like for you? What's the initial thought that comes up? Is it, oh my gosh, this is totally gonna be hard and I don't know if I can do this? Is it a limiting thought or is it a, oh my God, I'm so excited about this, what a great opportunity. If it feels more like a limiting thought, then that's an indication that your undercarriage of thoughts has a tone of limitedness or static energy. Now you might be asking yourself, what the heck is static energy? What does that mean? Well, static energy <clears throat> is our unconscious um, energy field that can collect things. Think of it like this. Static energy on our clothes picks up what? Crap. It picks up fuzz. It picks up lint balls. It picks up hair. It picks up all these things that we really would prefer not to have stuck to us and carry around all day long, right? But if we stay stuck in a static energy field, oftentimes our unconsciousness is actually being fed what it's craving. And what I mean by that is, if our unconsciousness is terrified of moving forward because it's based in fear, then we're feeding the fear. The fear of moving forward, the fear of being accepted, the fear of success, the fear of finding and using our voice. Maybe it's even the fear of happiness. Fear will, by all accounts, search out, find a dream, find a joy, find a happiness, and if we allow it to, it will squeeze the life right out of it. Doing that, allowing that happiness to grow, allowing the static to be desensitized and fade and dissolve, doing that will allow us to thrive. Otherwise, we're allowing that static energy to hold our possibilities, our potential, and our positivities. And what I mean by that are all the positive things that we bring to the table. It allows those things to stay hidden. If we're not challenging ourselves to open up and welcome the amazingness of what we are, then we are, by all accounts, allowing the static to buzz and bumble and collect all that static stuff that then we try so hard to remove. Think about that. What is your initial thought? Static and chaos will heighten our senses and typically it's gonna heighten our anxiety senses. And if left unaddressed, it most certainly will short circuit and cover up all of that potential, all of the dreams, all of the visions, all of the goals, all of the things that our higher self already knows that we can do because you know what? It's already earmarked with your name on it. Think about that. Think about how you respond to present thoughts of shifting. Also, think about how others respond to your thoughts. What if you 
have a thought of, hey, I think I want to do this, and your initial thought is, oh my God, you're never going to pull that off. Do you know how many times you failed at that? Oh, not again, seriously. Or what if you share a dream with someone and they say to you, wow, that's awful ambitious of you. Are you sure you want to take on that much? Be mindful of who you are sharing your dreams and visions with. Be mindful of the people that you are sharing your authenticity with. Now, I don't mean not be authenticity or not be authentic when you're out there in the free world roaming around. Absolutely. But when you become, when you are laying down the foundation and the groundwork to birth dreams, be mindful of who those people are that you choose to give that energy to because if they're going to shoot your ideas down, then you might want to rethink who you share that with. I had a friend say to me the other day, we were talking about something and, and they brought up a topic and, and I said, that's amazing. And their response was, I don't know, it's going to be hard. And I was like, well, what have you done so far to birth that concept? Well, nothing. I'm, it's just, it's going to be hard. And I said, well, how can you say it's going to be hard if you haven't done anything yet? And they stopped and they sat there for a minute, actually a few minutes in silence, and then said to me, I'm limiting myself. And I was like, you think? And they were like, yeah, because I've already set in motion. I've already convinced myself it's going to be hard and I haven't even taken the first step to see if I can do it. And by saying it's going to be hard, I have squashed and squelched out any happiness about the success, about the... Um, energy that I bring to it and I was like yeah so reframe that draw that back in reframe it and send it back out be mindful of the static that you allow into your headspace be mindful of the clutter that you allow into your headspace and your heart space and invest in and buy in and Cultivate scenarios and opportunities and friendships that allow and support the highest and best version of you. Even if that highest and best version of you comes in under the mark sometimes, surround yourself with people who can authentically appreciate who you are and what you bring to the table and challenge yourself to bring the very best of yourself in any given circumstances. Sometimes the very best of yourself is gonna tap out at 20%. Sometimes the very best of yourself is gonna tap out at 110%. But pump the brakes and dial back on the self-judgment. Let the ego take a back seat. Allow fear to have its place in a healthy arena. A fear of, hey, maybe I don't want to pick that snake up. Hey, maybe I shouldn't run out in the middle of traffic. Hey, you know, maybe I shouldn't, whatever. But then challenge the fears that show up that say, hey, you can never do that. Hey, you can't pull that off. Hey, what makes you think you're so important? Challenge those because honestly, those are bullshit fears. They are fears that our littles have carried with us from year to year to year. Our littles have carried with us all of our life. And when we're an adult or a young adult, we have the opportunity to look back on all of the things that have happened and to either let fear continue to drive our bus or to graciously and kindly allow fear to take a back seat using it when it works to our healthiest and highest advantage and allowing us not to do the things that are detrimental and dangerous to our health, but also feeding our soul and allowing us with fear on the back seat to build those bridges that will transpire the opportunities and allow those things to happen that will feed our goals and dreams and creating a sustainable, healthier, happier future for ourselves. So, that's all I got for you now. I hope you're having an 
amazing day wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Carve out a little bit of time for self-care. And until I see you next time, increase the peace. See ya.